So have you ever thought about what makes music, music? Well, music is all around us, be it walking in a shopping mall, you hear background music. In a forest, you hear birds chirping in the trees. Or just walking down the street, you hear someone whistling a tune. And all of these things we appreciate as music, but have we ever thought about what actually is music? So if we're talking about birds chirping in a tree, and we stop and think for a minute, wait a minute, can birds make music? Can animals make music? In fact, what, where do we draw the line between what is music and what is not? Can, say, a loose, rattling bicycle chain be music? It has some rhythm after all. Da -da 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 or a hum of an air conditioner. Woom, woom, woom. I, I don't know if your air conditioner sounds like that, but <laughs> these are sounds that we hear on a regular basis. And how do we say that they are not music or they are music? It's really important to draw a distinction between music and non-music for if we do not have this distinction then we don't have music because all noise is music and all music is noise so we, we don't really have anything that is music. Now to answer the question of what music is or at least to attempt to answer it a good starting point will be to define music and a way that we can define music is that music is organized sound now it's a bit harder than you might think to actually define music but this starting point music as organized sound will help us get our conversation going so music as organized sound it's helpful but it's insufficient because for example if we have two two people just knocking on the table simultaneously. Is that music? Um, maybe, maybe not. But I think if we want to be a bit more specific, we have to take our definition further and we have to ask the question, music is organized sound in terms of what? How is that sound organized? I'm not going to give you an answer because I don't have a direct answer for you but I'm going to give you some possible parameters that we can organize sound or organize sound to create music. So the first one is music is sound organized in time. The second is music is sound organized in an aesthetic manner and the third one is music is sound organized by human beings. So we're going to get through all three of them, but let's take it step by one. Music is sound organized in time. And I think this is a great step in the right direction because any music that we listen to takes place over a period of time. I think it's, it's very hard to find any sound that happens just in an instant that I would consider music. And if you have one, do, do let me know and I'll be interested to find out um, what instantaneous sound you consider music. So music is not a snapshot in time like you would find in photography or a sculpture. Music happens over time. Now, the problem is that if music is sound organized in time, then that rattling bicycle chain ta -ta 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 -ta, is sound organized in time, in regular intervals. And by that definition, that is music. But I, I hate that sound, so I'm gonna go further and try to denounce that as music. So the second one, music is sound organized in an aesthetic manner. And there we go. 
music has to be aesthetic, it has to be pleasing to our ear, it has to sound good, and that bicycle chain it sounds horrible, so that's not music. <laughs> but hold on, there's a little bit more to that. Because I want you to think of that one song that you absolutely hate, that you just find revolting, that you cannot understand why anyone would dare consider that music. Now, that song, think about it, maybe you can play it in your head for a while. And as much as we hate that particular song, at the end of the day, we know deep deep down that that is still music. And music is subjective. As one man's meat is another man's poison. That song that you hate so much, I'm sure there's at least one person who really, really likes that song. So although we kind of took a step back by refuting our own claim that music is sound organized in an aesthetic manner, we have arrived at a different revelation or conclusion which is very helpful, which we realize that music is actually subjective. It differs. What is music to one person may not be music to another. And it depends. It depends on our upbringing, it depends on what we've been exposed to, it depends on our values and the values of the community around us. Alright, so we've decided that music is subjective. Some people consider certain sounds to be music and some people don't. But let's go back to this bicycle chain, this ta 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 thing. This bicycle chain that just keeps rattling. Surely nobody in the world, no sane person in the world, considers that music, right? I mean, it just sounds horrible. Well, to delve further into this, let's look at our third parameter by which we can um, organize sound, and that is music is sound organized by human beings. So we're going back to our forest where we can hear beautiful bird songs and bird calls and it's what music to my ears. I love nature and I love the sound of birds. And to say that music is only sound organized by human beings is absurd because there have been full length albums of bird songs and whale calls. So definitely whale calls and bird chirps, that's musical. Well, let's, let, let's go further. So we've already discussed and arrived at an understanding that music is not necessarily defined by aesthetics. And there is a particular um, community in Africa where music can only be produced by human beings. Any sound created by an animal is not considered music. And in Timor-Leste, a small little island um, near Indonesia, there is a style of singing called Baikoko, where two or more individuals sing two separate melodies that are very similar, but they are really close together, but separated by an interval that is so small that two Western accustomed ears, ears accustomed to Western music, it sounds so dissonant and jarring that it's hard to appreciate. And aesthetically, to ears accustomed to Western music, that wouldn't, that wouldn't do. And so music is not necessarily based on aesthetic principles because it's subjective. So about music being produced by human beings, I guess what I'm trying to say is to not jump to conclusions and not uh, make assumptions as to what people might consider music or not because it is possible that music in some communities is not produced by animals. Animals cannot produce music and that is a parameter of which music is defined in those communities. So in not jumping to these conclusions, we can be more open-minded to appreciate another culture 
around the world, a different community and their music and what music is to them. And at the same time, we have a better understanding of what music is to us and we can start to draw a line, a line that is for ourselves or for our communities as to what is and what isn't music. So perhaps you've decided that bird songs and whale calls are music because they sound so aesthetically pleasing, they sound good and you appreciate them. It's music to your ears and to my ears. But here's a fun thought. Um, bird chirping or whale calls, they are literally the animals talking to one another. To us they sound really good but it's just their means of communication, at least as I understand it. Imagine if the whales recorded human beings talking to one another, produced it into an album and listened to it while they sleep. Now that, that's kind of creepy and uh, it's a kind of worms that I'm not going to open today. But I think I can admit that, okay, that rattling bicycle chain, it's not music to me at all. But perhaps to someone, it could be music and that's totally fine.